Hi guys, welcome back. Part two of this spinning rod build. And I took the whole pattern off of this rod. Now, this rod is my stepson's. Uh, the one I did in the first part of the video was for my stepson's friend. And I really didn't care for the colors I put on my stepson's. So I'm gonna redo it. Um, I'm gonna go back with the, the base thread which is green. Uh, this is just a green. So let me switch this out real quick. All right, so what I have to do first is I gotta take my thread like this and I've got to go over the top of my rod and then come around the rod, wrap it right around the rod blank. And see, I've already got a line marked there. I didn't mention that, but I marked a line uh, about four and a half inches. Now, I can go over just a little bit. That ain't no big deal. Uh, but I'm going to start right there on my line. I'm going to wrap this thread right around. Now, I'm keeping this tag in that I'm, that I'm wrapping around on the left, on the left side of my, I guess this is y'all's right but on the left side of my baseline. So now I can hold that down, take my base thread. Let me grab this from the bottom. So I'm holding that down, grab my base thread, and I'm gonna lift it up and over those two wraps. So I'm gonna lift it from the right over to the left over those two wraps. And that's going to pinch my thread to where I can actually let go of the whole thing and start winding it. And I have a foot pedal here, but I've got my spool a little too tight, I believe. It might work. So I'm going to wrap that. And all this little rod right here is for is just a tensioner for the thread. Uh, that way I can actually let go of all the thread with the one hand. So loosen that some. Now, what I, what I like to do is I don't like how stiff this is to slide back and forth. Now you can do this with, you can do, build these rods without a setup like this. Now this is a cheap setup, but you can build one on your lap if you wanted to, but you got to hold the spool of thread in your hand. So after I got that wrapped around a few times, I take and cut some excess tag end off. I don't have to cut it all the way down perfectly flush because it gets covered up. So I've got a foot pedal, but I'm gonna take this line off of this one hook because I don't like that slider. That way I can hold it in my fingers like this. And all I do is push my foot pedal and start wrapping this. Now it feels like it's getting really tight. So that's where I take my other hand and I can actually manipulate that spool turning. So, just get this all tightened up. going to get ready to tie it off. Now, I should have already had this ready to start with, but since this is a dark color thread, I'm going to use a light color thread like this yellow here. I'm just going to cut a small piece off to where I can take and form a loop uh, just by hangling both of the tag ends right there. Form a loop. Right there is my loop. So I'm going to take this loop, I'm going to go under this line coming to the rod, I'm going to come under this line, grab my loop and my tag end at the same time, and just slide it right up on top of the rod, letting the line hold it on there. Now I can finish this wrap. I don't want this to be too tight, because then it would be hard to pull it through. I 
but I don't want it loose either. So now I'm right there. All it is is you want about five to seven turns before you cut your main line and get ready to tie it, tie it on. So I'm going to get some slack out right there so that doesn't slingshot on me. I'm gonna cut my main line right there. So now I have my main line. My loop is sticking straight up right here. See if I can do this to where y'all can see. My loop, I'm gonna take my main line and I'm gonna stick it through that loop like that. I'm gonna pull both of the tag ends down. And see, now it's already holding to where it's not unraveling itself. And I just continue to pull. The loop pulled the main line up under the rest of the threads. So save that for here in just a few minutes. I'm gonna cut that excess tag end off. Now one mistake I just made. Now what I gotta do is I gotta tighten this up because I see I can see some rod blank through through the threads right there. So I'm gonna tighten this up just a little bit with my thumbnail just to close that off a little bit. And you always wanna push your thread towards the butt of the rod because the rod gets fatter towards the butt. So it tends to tighten the thread up. Now, my scissor handles, these are uh, a semi-hard plastic. They're not exactly super hard like most, like these scissors here are here. These got a really, really hard plastic. But this is like a semi-hard, not real soft, not super hard. I'm going to take it and use it kind of like a burnishing tool. And I'm just going to take and run it down my threads and turn the rod blank at the same time. And it's just pushing threads back to tighten them up and to take any gaps that I may or may not see, which I don't see anymore now. But... That's all it's for, is it makes that thread lay down really nice, make it easy for the next wraps. So, now that I've got that, now the next part is the pattern. This can be the most tedious part of the entire rod build is this pattern, uh, or whatever pattern you choose. It can be either really simple, or it can be really tedious. Now, I don't the hardest pattern I know how to do is a fish pattern on there. And it's basically nothing but a diamond and a chevron. The chevron is the tail of the fish. The body of the fish is a diamond. That's basically all it is. That's the hardest thing, pattern I know to do with the exception of one I did for my stepson before. And that was to put the American flags in there. That was a really, really hard pattern. It, caught, it made me have to hold multiple threads at one time and, that, and tape, pinning the threads back, bringing them forward, you know, stuff like that. That's really complicated. That's for really advanced. I was proud I was able to accomplish it, but it, it took me a long time to do. So today I'm not doing that. What I am gonna do is a diamond. I want a, a little bit lighter color to where you can see the difference. You can see it as it goes down. So I am going to go. Now he loves Viking stuff, Viking lore, Viking stuff, the Viking religion. He loves that stuff. So what I'm going to do is I looked and I read and there's three main colors that I can see in consistently in the Viking uh, thing. And that's gold, green, and red. I'm not doing red because gold, green, and red looks too Christmassy to me. I love Christmas, don't get me wrong, but I don't want his rod to look like a Christmas rod. So I've got the green and I've got the gold here. So, and that's what I'm going to go with. It's green and gold and we're going to do a diamond. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to start this the same way I did this, but I got I got to get it put on the, the uh, spool first. Let me get this. All right, guys, now I've got this set up. Now I'm gonna go over the top, just like that. I'm gonna wrap it around the, bl the blank at least twice. Oops, 
and then I'm going to accidentally let go of it and slingshot this thread into not acting right. So I am going to put it there, here, it just slipped out of my hand. Again, take it, go around the blank of the rod at least twice. I mean, you don't have to. My dad only wrapped it once and was able to get going. It takes me two wraps to be able to hold it on there right. I don't know why. It takes me two, and he could do it in one, but it is what it is. And so now I've got that crossed over and pinched, just like I did the green. And I'm just going to wrap this around a couple of times to get it to hold really well. And then I'm going to cut that excess off. Tighten that up. I'm going to cut that excess off. There they are. Again, it doesn't have to be too, too close. Now, I, I like removing off of this little slider because I do it by hand better. Now, Going this way, we just want to keep even spaces. Now, we're not following this exact pattern here. We are going in more like a spiral now because we need to form, in order to do the diamonds, we need to form an X. So, now, what's going to end up happening is I've got my green base. I'm going to form an X with my gold but I'm going to go back and forth a couple of times just to see what I like. And then I got to switch back to my green, outline that X to start forming the diamond. Me. But what I want to do is I want to make spirals and I want to try to keep a pretty even spacing between each thread as even as I can without getting too technical. That was a little bit different. A little bit wide. Right there. Just trying to keep it as even as I can, just like that. Now I'm gonna wrap at this end, I'm gonna turn it a couple of times around just to get it to hold in place. Like that. Now, the trick to this to make it look consistent and to look right is I have to have my diamonds even with my real seat, which means I have to have them even, the other diamonds on the back side, even with my backbone. So on the top of my rod, I have a glare here. I don't know if y'all can see one from the light on that side. There should be one right there, a glare. You can see it on the thread and on the blank. So I'm going to line that up where I can see my real seat is lined up with that glare like that. And then I'm gonna take my thread and I'm gonna start to go the, back the same direction. And I got to make this X on the glare, even with my backbone. And then as I keep turning, I got to make it even with my real seat. And you'll see it here in just a second where they start lining up. Even with the backbone. Even with the real seat even with the backbone, even with the real seat, almost right there. That spacing must be a little off, but that's all right. Even with the backbone, trying to inch it over there we go even with the real seat now I'm gonna come back forward catch right in front because that other thread helps hold this one from going the other direction but if you notice 
Let me turn it to where I know y'all can see it. You see those X's are all in line with each other. That helps it stay consistent, to look consistent. So once I go around, now I'm going to go back, but now it's easier. I can just follow that thread line. All right, so now I'm going to tie this one off. And remember, I got to do it with the same knot before. So now this is going to be a little tougher on my eyes because I've only got the one loop cut right now. So let me get this set. So again, I want to set my loop down. Since I'm holding the thread, I'm doing it this way. Set the loop down. Pull my thread down on top of it to where that's holding the loop there. But this time, because I'm finishing on the front or the tip side, or the, the side facing the tip, the loop is going to point that direction. So I am going to, whichever direction I am wrapping is the direction the loop is going to point. So I'm going to wrap this around a good five times. It's three, four, five. Let's go just for a little extra right there so I can hold my line with one finger, cut the thread, feed my tag end of that thread, the end of it. Let me get it straighter. It's foil thread, so it likes to curl. I'm going to feed it through that loop. So you can actually see that it's going through that loop. It's held, held in that loop. My two tag ends here, I'm going to grab them and pull them. And just pull that right out from under. So now this line here is under a five or six wraps. So it's held in place. All right. It's the diamond. So, I'm going to real quick disconnect this rod from the turntable. I really shouldn't, but because then I have to reconnect it, but I'm going to do it anyway. <clears throat> Set my drink out the way. And again, I'm going to do the same thing. I'm starting at the top. Taking my line, wrapping around the blank. Let me get a little extra line there. Wrap it around the blank twice, because it's just easier for me. Taking my main line, crossing over my wrap to help pinch it in place. Just wrap it around three, four times. A few times. Oh, cutting the tag end. I know some of this just seems repetitive, but it, it's exactly what it is. This is repetitive. So now that I've got that done, I need to follow my lines again and you will start to see the diamond form just going to do a quick wrap here put a piece of tape on one of the feet whichever foot's going to face forward and then I'm going to try to line this in place How far? Oh, you're kind of really close. So, and I'm just gonna kind of hook that in place. Slide it over just a little. Right there. Tape it on there. Make it to where I can get the tape back off real easy. 
So now I can wrap over this one foot. See, now I've got that foot wrapped up. Take the tape off. I gotta go forward with my thread. I'm gonna go forward right here. Now on the back one. So go forward with it and then up till I catch. Now my dad would have never left this showing. He would have had that covered up too. And I didn't think about it till after I got it started on there. So we're just gonna go with it like that. Now that I have that on there, I need to keep going forward, but I wanted to go on this one right there. So let's slide that. And once I get right about here somewhere, let me get so now I'm wrapping towards the front. So my loop is going to face towards the front. So I'm going to go under my main line. Pull it up, let the line hold it on there, and then turn it, you know, at least five times. That gives a good hold, but you can go more, but you go too much and it's too hard to pull it through there. So five to seven is a good number. Pull slack. Cut the main line. Hold it. I'm going to take this line, stick it through that loop. Pull it up to where you can see it's holding that loop up. And just pull the, pull the tag end of the loop. Pulling that line through. That simple. But there we go, we got small diamonds on there. Small diamonds on there. So, got diamonds to go in line with the backbone and diamonds to go in line with the real seat. I'm gonna put a, a 24 hour epoxy on here uh, that's gonna cover the sticker, it's gonna cover his name, it's gonna cover the thread. And so I'm gonna do that right now, but I've got to rewrite this name on here. 50-50 epoxy, but it needs to be, let me get my drink off of that. This epoxy needs to be as close to perfectly weighed out or measured up as possible. So I have this scale, I got this scale from Harbor Freight, it's some kind of postal scale but I also use this scale for mixing my shellacs for the my woodworking projects so got it zeroed out with the cup on it so here's my epoxies I call these 24-hour epoxies I think you can handle the rod within eight hours uh but I leave it on the turntable for 24 hours I don't mess with it for 24 hours so I need a, a good bit not an overload amount so I'm gonna go with 10 grams that's five right there so I need five grams of the B that was part A this is part B Six, seven, eight, nine, 
can all right so now i need a brush and a paper towel so paper towels because i stir i don't stir with the bristles I stir with the handle. Turntable on. It's too fast. I gotta turn the speed down. Just like that. Now you gotta mix this thorough and you got plenty of time to mix it so it's no rush just mix this up really well I scrape the sides scrape the bottom you know spend a couple of minutes mixing it because if it is not mixed thoroughly it will not set up right. If you don't measure it out evenly, it possibly will not, more than likely, will not set up right. And you don't want a mistake like that. That can ruin everything you've done. All right, we got that mixed. Wipe that handle off or I don't make a mess in my hand. bristles oops I need to get cardboard under that because this quite often drips just like that right there and I'm gonna start on the threads side just right dead on the end Making sure I don't completely cake up that hook keeper, but I do need to get it on there. And I'm just going to work my way down. I got to get it under that, but I'm turning a little faster than I like. some extra there get that to smooth out and that, that's what this turntable is for it's to help this epoxy smooth out as smooth as possible it just keeps turning letting it just level out <laughs> And it looks like I'm good here. So this is going to sit for the next 24 hours. Just turning, curing, and then, uh, so I'll be able to get this video out there. And the next video, part three, will be on the eyes. Thank you for watching, and we will catch you on the next video.